Welcome to A Bipolar, A Schizophrenic, and A Podcast, where each episode is recorded after midnight in a vacant and possibly condemned location. Now, here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. Hi, I'm Michelle Hammer, and I'm Schizophrenic. My name is Gabe Howard, and I live with bipolar disorder, and we are continuing our Columbus tour, and we are hanging out in a warehouse that serves spaghetti. I, I, we don't like to mention names, but it's probably not a hard code to crack. This is one of my favorite restaurants. I, I've been coming here since I was two. It's just like a warehouse, and it has a trolley car in it, and it's just, it's, it's pretty badass. I like it a lot. What time like is it, Michelle? It's... 12, 51, and 21, 22, 23, 24 seconds. I knew I should not have bought you a watch. Give me a watch. No, I already gave you a watch, and I'm not going to give you another one. After finding out I had a Rolex, you were jealous that your watch was so shitty and cheap because it didn't exist, so I gave you my old Swatch. I I only wear Timex. (laughs) Liar, you don't wear anything. I take a licking and I keep on ticking. That's the Timex ad. <laughs> you don't know Timex? Oh, oh, we're getting letters for that one. I can't wait to hear from your mom asking me, like, what the hell is my daughter talking about? I think she knows the Timex ads. Let, let's I, hope I'm that, not a good quality watch, Gabe. I need to know the time. Why don't you just use your phone? Good point. Moving on. Moving on. We are going to talk about the time that we have spent in psych wards. Yay! Uh, when it comes to living with mental illness, I, I think one of the persistent questions that people have is, like, are you a mental patient? Um, were you in a mental hospital? I think when we deal with society's limited understanding of what it means to live with bipolar and schizophrenia, this, this idea of being a mental patient really really permeates their consciousness. Because I, I get asked all the time, it's like, oh, well, were you ever like in an institution? Were you in a hospital? Did you live in a group home? I, I really think this is how people understand it. So let's, let's break that down a little bit and explain to people exactly what it means to hang out in a psych ward. Exactly what it means to hang out in a psych ward? Yeah, I mean, because what people believe is this, this nonsense. They believe what they've seen on TV. Yeah. And that, that's, that's really not the case at all. I mean, some of it's true. Like, for example, the doors are locked. You are locked in a psych ward. That, that is not incorrect. But, but the whole trope of the, of the institution on the grounds with all the orderly, that, that's very much one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And, and that movie with Winona Ryder and Angelina Jolie. Yeah, yeah. We have yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, it's just, that, that's not really reality. Like, I don't know if it was ever that way because, you know, I wasn't alive in the 50s and 60s. I don't know what psych wards were like you, back then. You, you weren't alive? Aren't you like old as can be? Listen, I am 10 years older than you. So if I am old as can be, you are almost You're old You're more than 10 years older than me. That's not true. You're like 12 years older than me. I mean, that's... That's probably more accurate, but Let's again, get it accurate, Gabe. Let's get it accurate or I'm going to commit you. All right. But you realize that if I'm 60, then that makes you 48. I'm not 48. So how old am I again? I don't know how old you are, but I'm not 48. <laughs> I'm not even 30. Actually. I'm not even 30. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're not yeah, going to be able to, you're not going to be able to cast that chip in much longer. Yes. Yeah, shut up. So let's just say, let's not say, let's just talk. I was sent to the psych ward three times involuntarily by my college. So it was through school, I was sent to the psych ward and all three times was not a fun time. They were all because of like a suicide attempts or one suicidal tendency where I kind of trusted the wrong person and said something to the wrong person. And next thing I know, I tried to go to class and I saw a few cops and the athletic director outside my classroom and I ran away. And, but no, no worries. I, I was found and put in a police car to go to the hospital. That was fun. But I mean, I, 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 I was not in like a mental institution like people would think. You just go to the hospital and then you just get put in the in like the ward that's in the hospital. Yeah, there's like a wing. People misconstrue and think you're in a, like a whole mental institution. Like in New York City, there's that whole 
island with a gigantic building and everyone's kind of like, what's that building? And I'm like, that's a mental institution. Like it's gigantic, the one they have. I, a psych ward is really just a wing and it's not for like a huge extended stay, but you can stay for a while. Well, the first time I was in the psych ward was uh, after a crazy kind of suicide attempt argument with the UPD officer being very drunk. And I got admitted at night. And usually after a suicide attempt in New York State, you're supposed to stay for 72 hours. But I kind of met this girl in the morning. She's talking to me and she's telling me how, why she's in there and how long she's been there. And she pretty much gave me like the best worst advice, which kind of was just tell the doctor what they want to hear and you can get out really, really fast. So since it was my first time, when the doctor kind of came in, I really just kind of said to him, you know, I've never really felt depressed before. I don't know why I did any of this. I think I was just really drunk. I was really kind of just nervous. I don't know why I did it because I've never felt this way. And to a doctor that thinks, oh, this girl, maybe she was just drunk or maybe he was a really bad doctor. He was like, okay, you, you, we'll let you out. And I got out at 12 o'clock. The next afternoon you weren't even there for 24 hours you were there for yeah like, like 12 hours yeah but it was it was horrible and i kind of made a point i was like i'm never going back there again but little did i know i'd end up there twice twice more two twice, more times twice more Let, let's yeah. talk about first impressions so you were an adult i mean you were a college kid well, but, but you, were an adult. you were over 18 you were picked up by the police Yes. Were you handcuffed? Were you just put in the back seat? Like, like how, did, how did that go? It was kind of like a, a snow day type of deal. We were all drinking in the dorm. We all kind of got caught. I got an altercation with UPD and I was handcuffed and then I was brought to the psych ward. Is this yeah. the infamous... This is my infamous cop story, yes. Okay, well that's that. We're just going to save that for a future episode. Yes. But th that entire altercation just landed you... And notice how we talk about it, it landed you in the psych ward as opposed to you went to the hospital to get treatment because you were suicidal. Right, right, right. And it you, was horrible. I mean, the thing is, like, people don't realize, like, I was in there, like, I had cut my wrist. So the nurses are all like, okay, we're going to check your body for more cuts. And they basically strip searched me. These grown women just strip searched me completely, checked underneath my underwear, checked my breasts. Like, I felt violated because they said they were checking my body for more cuts. Like I said, there's nothing else, you know? They were, it was like really horrifying. Let's consider this. Obviously at the time, you know, you're, you're, you're a young woman, you're now behind a, a, a locked door with other grown women taking your clothes off and staring at you and not taking your word for anything. So you feel like you have no agency. But in fairness, this was for your own good. I mean, at the time, it was very traumatic, but can you see where it was helpful? Like, how do you feel about it, you know, now that, you know, a decade later, now that you're an advocate and you're well? I mean, a decade later, the whole situation should have been handled better, i.e. the situation with the cop. But I mean... Yeah, we're talking I, about the psych ward. This okay. is called a live in La Vida psych ward, not situations with cops. Okay. The Let's thing talk is, about the that, psych ward. That was an experience because it absolutely scared me. It was horrifying. And I, I do, it, it just gave me information on what to do if that ever happened to me again. Now I know what to do. Now everything. I mean, I'm even in there and I'm like, the thing is, I was very, very drunk when I showed up. And these people are all doing all this. I started praying in Hebrew. And I'm in upstate New York, not many a Jew. A nurse comes over, Do, are you a Baptist? Do you usually pray in tongues? They didn't recognize- They didn't recognize Hebrew. And I said, I, I, it just got, I got into a huge fight with all these stupid goyim. I can't even. The stupid what? The goyim. What's a goyim? A non-Jew. Is that was, a racial slur? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, but I just started cursing at them in Yiddish as well, which they were not fond of. I, 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 I imagine. I'm just bringing that up. I really shouldn't. Whatever. Yeah, that's. But, but for real, let let let's let's dial this back, Michelle. Let, let's, okay. I mean, sincerely, I I understand that it was scary, and that you were you were traumatized. But is this the best case scenario? I mean, do as an advocate, don't put yourself in those shoes. A young woman comes in drunk, 
with a cut on her from a suicide attempt brought in by the police. And 12 hours later, they send her home back to her dorm room to be alone. Is that not horrific? I understand that you wanted to leave, but, but sincerely, is that not horrific? You were unmedicated, unmedicated, unhelped, and they just threw you back into the wild with not even a support system. Well, 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 when I got back to my dorm, there was a huge meeting in the common area all about what happened the night before that I walked into the middle of. It was, that was almost worse because everybody was talking about what happened, what I did, why I did it, what's going on. And then right after that, I had to go have a meeting with one of the school counselors. Do you think you were ready to leave? I mean, be honest. Do you think that you of would have been? Of course, I was not ready to leave, but like I was very angry. I was just angry about the whole situation. I mean, when I had that meeting at the dorm about everything that happened, the guy I had been speaking to as a therapist was there, and he kind of said to me, "I was in such a bad mood." He goes, "When did you start cutting yourself?" And I just said to him, "Not long after I first met you." So you lashed out. Oh, I la- I was so angry that the cops got called on me. Once again, we're so talking mad. about the psych ward. I know we're talking about the psych ward. We're but talking that's about everything got the but being in the psych ward. But that's why I got sent to the psych ward. I understand. I was getting sent there no matter what. No matter what happened, I was going to the psych ward. Your first visit to the psych ward was unhelpful, and you real and you learned quickly how to play the system. Real, yes. You learn what to do to play the system, how to not go back there again. And if you do go back there, now you know some tricks. You know. Bring an iPod. Bring, bring an a, iPod. Bring your phone, bring your charger, bring your wallet, bring your everything you need. Then go. This advice, see, I cannot offer this advice because when I went to the psych ward, none of that stuff was invented yet. Well, now you're calling yourself old. Well, I'm not, I'm just, that's just a fact. There was no I anything yet. Back when I went to the psych ward, apples were still computers. Well, and fruit. You just said apples were still computers. Yeah, they were. Apples yeah. are computers. But they're also phones. Their phones, their iPads, their everything. They were Apple, just... Apple is life. Apple's going to make their own psych ward. The Apple psych ward? Wouldn't that be awesome? It'd be called iCrazy. Ah, I love it. Let's do it. The terms of service, you I check agree. in, but you can never get out ever. Yes, yes, the iCrazy. If you unsubscribe, you lose access to all your music and your sanity. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can see it. I strangely, see it. strangely effective. Let's pitch it. So your first visit to the psych ward was quick? Quick. 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 But quick. You, you, how long did it take before you ended up right back where you started? Let's see. That was in February, I believe. I went in, then back in uh, March, April. I don't know. The thing is, I was on the lacrosse team. So when I had to explain that situation to my uh, lacrosse coach, because being in the psych ward, I couldn't make it to practice at 9 a.m., so I had to call her and explain to her why I wasn't at practice. And I was kind of like, well, it's kind of a long situation. Do you want me to tell you in person or just on the phone right now? And she's like, no, you can tell me on the phone right now. Because she was mad because she didn't really know why I had not shown up for practice. So I explained it to her. Obviously, it was not what she thought was going on. So she was very there for me. But she made it clear that if I was to stay on the team, I need to go talk to one of the therapists at school. So she was kind of making me go. I was telling her that I didn't like it. She told me I needed to be on medication. I told her I was not going to take any medication. And then one night, another drunken night, I decided to um, like take a bottle of Tylenol when I was like drank half a box of wine. Woke up in the morning, couldn't stop puking. And I called her about 9 a.m. and said, "Um, can you bring me to the hospital? And she said, are you okay? I said, I need to go to the hospital. And she came and picked me up. We went to the hospital in the waiting room. I uh, went to the bathroom twice to vomit more. I got brought in. I had an IV. The women came over and they're like, I, I mean, trying, first I lied and said I took only like 30 pills. They said, you're okay. And then I was like, I lied. I took way more than that, please. I'm in so much pain right now. Like, the thing is, I knew what was going to happen if I went to the hospital, that I would be placed in the psych ward. Like, that's how much pain I was in. One would think taking a painkiller would kill pain. So taking more painkillers might kill more pain. Not the case. 
it hurts like hell. It was the most painful thing I've ever gone through in my entire life. The fact that I would check myself into the hospital, which I knew would send me to the psych ward, shows how much pain I was in. They came over with this black thing and says, this is charcoal, we want you to drink it to help you throw up. I go, give it to me. They're like, you want it? I go, give it to me. And they just keep drinking it and I'm vomiting and I'm just vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. Wow. And so you were, you were yeah. admitted to the psych ward. So here you yes, are. Yes, I was. You were admitted to yes, the psych ward. How long did you stay this time? Uh, I believe that was six days. Six days. Okay. So, Five or six days. So, so now you're actually getting real treatment. Well, the th yeah. The thing is, I was getting mad at the, at the hospital because um, I didn't want to go to the psych ward. They said I was being difficult. They strapped me down to a bed, shot me up with some needles. And then I woke up at 8 a.m. the next day and they said, we're putting you in, a, in an ambulance and you're going to the psych ward in this hospital over there. I go, I didn't know what was happening because I had been so drugged up. And I signed a piece of paper, which you can't apparently legally do when you're on that many drugs. So it's fascinating how the laws work in this. I'm going to this is this yeah. is drop a little knowledge. You can check yourself into the psychiatric ward by signing yourself in voluntarily by stating that you are of sound mind and therefore able to enter into a contract to check yourself into some place that you can only get into if you're not in sound mind and therefore need psychiatric care. So it's it's a little bit weird. But but these these are how the laws work. PsychCentral.com is the Internet's largest and oldest independent mental health online resource. Since 1995, our completely free, award-winning website has been run by mental health professionals offering reliable, trusted information, as well as over 250 support groups to people living with mental illness. From professional articles to personal stories, PsychCentral.com is worth your time checking out and is the generous sponsor of this podcast. So here you are, you're living in the psych ward. Talk about being in the psych okay, ward. Okay, being in the psych ward, being in the psych ward. This place was actually pretty interesting um, up in like Western New York. Uh, I met a lot of like really interesting people and I actually learned actual things. Like they had a piece of paper. These are the things I'm going to try to learn about myself every day. And every day it was like a group kind of a therapy thing. And it was like, oh, learn what triggers are. Learn what red flags are. And it was kind of like, if you start thinking you know, maybe a paranoid thought, maybe that's a trigger. If you start thinking, oh, I, uh, I want to cut myself, there's a trigger. If maybe you get a dangerous object, that's another trigger. Lower the flag, count the flag. What are the different steps to make you never end up in the psych ward again? That's what you can learn in the psych ward. And that's why when I first went and didn't stay, I didn't learn any of that, really. Right, because you were only there for 12 hours. Exactly. So, so you admit, yes, yeah. you, you may have tricked a doctor but you screwed yourself over. Because imagine if 60 days later, when you ended up back, you would have been successful in that suicide attempt. Like everybody would be at your, your, your wake being like, well, she was so smart, she tricked the doctor and died. I guess you're right, but no, yeah, it was actually, and also like I was, long, I was there for longer. I met other people. I met people that had been back more than once. I met people who were like, you know, it was like a mother and her daughter was there. And I kept thinking, wow, like if I was like, somebody's mom and my daughter comes visits me in the psych ward. I just felt like, wow, I like, what if my mom would do that? Would, and then I felt like, how does my mom feel that I'm here? Like, it just made me think of a mother daughter dynamic and it made me feel so like, it just, I don't, it just kind of hurt, you know? I don't it's know. It's terrifying. Just, it is terrifying. I met like this other guy that was there, like he was living in a boy's home and then he had to move out when he was 18 to go live with his grandparents and he got in a fight with his grandfather. So he like, threatened to hurt himself and kind of slice his neck a little bit. So they brought him to the psych ward. But the thing is he had nowhere to go live, but he was technically not supposed to be there anymore, but he couldn't go live with his grandparents, but they had to find a place for him. So he was just stuck living in the psych ward with nowhere to go. So wow. it was just, I felt so horrible for him. So, I mean, I was, I was, he, he was like a, totally normal dude. I'm not saying people in the psych ward aren't normal, but like he had one incident and he's just there. And he's like, people were like, does anyone watch, want to watch the movie on Seroquel right now? Um, and I was, we were like, um, I guess so. Okay. And he was like, I've seen the video three times already. 
you wow. know? Because he'd been there for so long. He'd been there for so long, just waiting to to leave. All right, so now I have two questions. Okay, Gabe. What was, like, you went, Gabe, you were in the psych ward how many times? Once. Just once. How long were you there for? I, I, was, I was there for three and a half days. My experience with the psych ward was, was much like yours in that I wanted to get the hell out of there um, because I was terrified. I, I think we've talked about on this show before, and anybody that's heard my story knows that, that when I went to the emergency room that day, I, I did not know that I was mentally ill. I did not know that, that thinking of suicide meant you go to the hospital. I, I, I was so shocked. I, I walk into the ER, my friend says, this is my friend Gabe, he wants to kill himself. And all of a sudden people started asking me questions swirling around me and four hours later, I'm, I'm in a hospital bed. I don't even know what happened. Honestly, I don't know what happened. I don't know how I made it from the emergency room to the psychiatric ward. I don't know why I was admitted. They told me that I signed myself in. I'm just gonna take their word for it. I mean, they had my signature, that seemed reasonable. And here I am, I wake up the next morning and I'm in a psychiatric ward. And, you know, I knew very little. Everything that I knew about mental illness, the treatment for mental illness, and all of that came from television. It all came from pop culture. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Pop culture really let me down on this one. Yeah. When I first, I woke up because I, I was fat. I was, I was, I was, I was fat as hell. And I just... I weighed, you know, 500 pounds. And because I was so fat, the, the, the people were having trouble doing a blood draw. So what they were supposed to do was come in, wake me up a little bit, take my blood, and then I could go back to sleep. But they had to come in like three or four times. You know, that's really interesting because that's what I noticed about the psych ward too. They're always taking your blood. Yeah. I used to have a f irrational fear of needles and blood drawn, but from going to the psych ward, I completely got over it because I was poked with so many needles. Oh, mine was worse. Mine, mine made it absolutely worse because they just coming, like different people were coming in. They would try multiple times. They try, I, I probably got poked. I, I don't remember the exact number, but, but at least three or four different times before somebody was able to come in and, and actually get it done. And I was crying. I was crying and there was a nurse that was kind of like talking to me and telling me it was going to be okay. And I think she's the one that finally drew the blood. The next morning when I woke up, I kept hearing somebody come to the door constantly. Like the door would open, they'd look in and then the door would shut and I'd hear a clipboard fall back into its little holder and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I finally got up and that same nurse came over and I was like, you don't have to keep checking on me. And she said, I have to keep checking on you because you're on suicide watch. How because, could you be on suicide watch in the psych ward? Because I was admitted to the psychiatric ward for, you know, wanting to kill myself. So, but how could, how could you kill yourself in the psych ward? I, I honestly don't know, but when you're on suicide watch, they come and check on you every 15 minutes to make sure that you don't figure it out. It is a safe place where they, they do what they can, but the ingenuity of, of, uh, insanity let's let's not pretend it's not a thing i mean people do successfully complete suicide in psych wards all the time really yeah they 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 find a way it, it's it's this is a really scary illness I, so they they just kept checking on me until yeah i i don't i don't know i'm trying to say something funny to like make myself feel better but the reality is, is that's how sick I was that even in a psych ward where they control the space, they keep everything that's dangerous away from you. They were still worried that I'd find a way to do it and check on me. And that just, that really made a, uh, a long lasting impression on my life. What time did you have to wake up in the morning? I don't really remember, but it was very early and much earlier than they didn't wake me up. I woke up on my own. Uh, obviously I wasn't sleeping well and you know, the, the needles, the everything else. But when I got up, I ventured out into the unit. It was a unit. You, you made buddies, didn't you? Uh, I mean, I did. I, I did eventually make friends. But that very first day as I was walking out, it was, it was very quiet. It was still pretty early. It was before breakfast. And as a fat guy, I knew that. But remember, everything that I knew about mental illness, psychiatric hospitals, psych wards, mental institution, mental hospital, whatever you want to call it came from television. And here's the one thing that I was positive of. Somewhere in that building was a ping pong table. 
Because every single pop culture reference to mental illness included a ping pong table. That's true. There was no ping pong table. That is true. I was so upset by this. I was incredibly, incredibly upset by this. I talked about that every day for three days. Here's a funny story. A I was in order. one with a ping pong. I was in one with a ping pong table. I'll let you know. Just saying, just saying, just saying. You had better what? health insurance. I don't know. Hey, listen, do you think I had a choice where I was put? I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. There I just happened choice. to be a ping pong table. And there was about a 75 year old woman that would play ping pong with me for three seconds and then say thank you and walk away. That is normal. The, I mean, that, that is, that is psych word one-on-one, but listen, 10 years later, literally a decade later, I, I, I won my four year epic battle with mental illness. I've reached recovery. I've, I've gotten divorced. I've, I've moved on. And this bothered me so much that there was no ping pong table that I called the hospital and asked to donate a ping pong table. They would not let me donate a ping pong table. Why? They said that it was a suicide risk because the netting could be used to hang yourself and the ping pong paddles could be used as a weapon. Interesting. Interesting. Like the one, I was listening to one with that, that had a pool table, but it had to be watched. And we could only use it at certain times because it had to, people had to watch us, but we, we used it one night when some people were on that didn't care. And we played some pool and I beat this dude really, really well. I just beat him. It's the only time I was ever good at pool was uh, in the psych ward. So you were hallucinating that you were good at pool that never no, happened? <laughs> no, no. Well, the, the, I mean, I was playing with this guy who, who was also in this like word who used to say he played a lot of pool when he was younger. He kept giving me tips. And I beat this other guy that I think he, he was homeless on the streets and he got brought in for calling 911 saying he wanted to kill himself. And I was playing against him and the, and the pool shark was helping me and I, and I won. The pool shark. Well, he, he said he was a pool shark back in the day. And you believed him? I don't know. Well, I won, didn't I? It's the only time I've ever won in pool. You don't believe my story? I believe that you believe your story. My story is real. I don't know why you don't like my story, Abe. Is that patting me on the head, you giant beanstalk? Looking back, let, let, let's, let's talk about all these years later. Do you feel that going to the psych ward saved your life? I mean, was, was being admitted to a psychiatric hospital, did, do you feel this made you better? Oh my God, I hate that question so much because I hate the answer. What's the answer? Because the answer is yes, but I hated the psych ward so much. I hated it. It was so awful. That's why it's a yes. Because of all that stuff I've learned, of everything I feel now, I am never going back and I will make sure of that. One of the things that I tell people a lot when they ask me about this is that everything that happened to me was incredibly traumatic. I, I was locked. I was an adult. I was an adult man locked in a psychiatric ward. I wasn't allowed to leave. I, I, was, I, I felt like a prisoner because I was a prisoner. Exactly. I was incarcerated. I had to, I owned my own home. I had a job. I made good money, but I couldn't eat without getting permission from strangers. I, I felt so bad. I just felt so bad and I had no control. And this was incredibly traumatizing in a time when I was scared and sick. And it, it, was, it was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. And there's really no way to make it better. So the best case scenario did all that damage to me. And this is why as an advocate, I, I really try to explain to people that I understand why we have to be locked in a psych ward. I, I get it, I understand. We are a danger to ourselves or others. You need to be able to control the area. You can't let somebody who's trying to kill themselves like I was just wander around aimlessly. Oh my God, we could get our hands on a knife from a kitchen and, and then it would all be over for us. I understand why those doors have to be locked. But I don't think that they understand that just because this is the right move to keep us safe, that it's not terrifying. It's not scary. It is terrifying. It is scary. I cannot overstate how absolutely helpless and terrified I felt. I remember thinking like, 
this is so bad and jail is worse than this. Like, I, I, I'm definitely never going to go to jail because, like, this is just so awful. This is just such an awful experience. I've talked to a lot of people who were in jail and the psychiatric hospital, and it's interesting because they obviously say that jail is worse because you've got criminal charges pending and you need a lawyer and you don't know when you can get out and guards are meaner to you, that kind of thing. Yeah. The one thing that a lot of people say is that in a way they prefer jail because what? when you're in jail, they treat you like an adult. They treat That's you like true. an adult who is in trouble. They treat you like a criminal, but they still give you agency. Whereas in the psychiatric ward, you yeah. lose so much agency. They just treat you like you're sick. Have well, you taken you your are. meds today? Have you taken your meds today? Are you yeah. going to eat lunch? You didn't finish your lunch. Are you okay? The best case scenario for somebody with mental illness is going to the psychiatric hospital and getting the help that they need to become people like us. I mean, let, let's be honest, Michelle. We're, we're doing pretty good. And like you said, that all started with our visit to the psychiatric hospital. But we I really mean, do need to acknowledge. I think, I think it started with it, but I mean, what, what real recovery was, was acknowledging that what the help it did for me and getting over being so angry that I did go. Yes. Yes. Michelle, your generation is really, really good at leaving reviews, subscribing, and utilizing social media to make us popular. So do some little millennial speak and get all our listeners that are your age to do it. And when you're done, I'll explain it to the old people. Oh my goodness. Well, you can totally subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, anything you desire, Stitcher as well. You can follow me and Gabe on Twitter. I'm Schizophrenic NY. Gabe is Gabe Howard 29. I'm also on Instagram, schizophrenic.nyc. And you need to follow us on Twitter at Psych Central. You can also go to psychcentral.com slash BSP. That's our website. That and is. And for all the old people, find a kid, ask him to set it up for you. See you next week. Did you take your meds? You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to Schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to psychcentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.